Hi there, John. Hey, Tom, how you doing? I'm doing fine, thank you. Um, it's my birthday. Oh, happy um, birthday. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, 30 years old today? Yeah, the, it's, it, it ends in a zero and you've, you've guessed correctly. So uh, your, your insights are, are keen. Right. Um, <laughs> hey, did, didn't talk to you after the last game, but it seemed like you were creating a lot and you were finally kind of able to, to break through there. But did it, did it have kind of those almost frustrating feel for a while that you were creating chances and not being able to put them in? Absolutely. That was, uh, I mean, credit to, to Sporting Kansas City. Uh, they made it a really hard game on us. Um, we did that a little bit to ourselves uh, with a little bit of lack of quality in the final third. Um, but you have to give your opponent, you know, uh, credit in this moment because they defended stoutly, uh, made it tough on us. And uh, at the end of the day, I'm really glad that we broke them down, um, you know, and, and found that first one, which absolutely led to the second one. Um, and just in this run you've been on, have you seen things that the team is doing better in this, or has it been a collection of things? What's what, what's hap been happening here? Yeah, it's a lot of little details uh, coming together and, and us trying to be a good unit, really. Um, it's something that we've talked about since the first time we got together, that we wanted to be a, a strong team. We wanted to be a good group of, of individuals that come together collectively and when you see a team get on a run like this, um, battle through some moments in games that don't go their way, I think that's a really good sign about what kind of team we have. And just uh, personnel-wise, Vitor Diaz hasn't played the last three games. Is anything going on there? Yeah, we were trying to keep that on the down low. Um, but after Houston, um, he had some, some issues uh, and, you know, the good news I can report to you is that uh, he seems like he's he's coming. Uh, he's going to be able to come back um, sooner than we first uh, understood. Um, that's still to be determined a little bit, but he has been out and we've missed him. Uh, great that guys have stepped up like Carson Gibbs, for example, and, uh, you know, lifted uh, the weight of missing Vitor. So. Um, that hasn't just been Carson, you know, Sergio and Dita and Ezra, you know, guys have come in and filled in a role for us right now, but certainly missing a uh, Vitor. I was going to ask about Carson. I mean, he, he's gotten a chance these past few games and it seems like it's been a, a he's had a good impact. Yeah, really happy for Carson. Uh, I thought his game at Chicago um, was the first time where he, he not only started, but started and came back in the second half and, gave us really valuable minutes. Uh, and then last week, you know, he came on to the field and with our first sub and he was an immediate impact. Uh, so those are great, you know, signs for a young player like Carson where he continues to grow. Um, he himself as a young player uh, has to battle through moments and indecisiveness and, you know, but we've been trying to support him in every possible way. And, and he is, absolutely you know uh played well and and showed that he deserves these moments and then there's one last thing for me on a tangential topic but the academy team's going down to i guess texas this weekend for the tournament um just the how their seasons have gone i know you're not directly involved but obviously some of those guys have come into your team in the past how, just the accomplishment of what they've been able to do this year yeah, for, for our academy teams, you know, we only have two, a U16 and a U17. In the, the first year that we've ever been in existence, for both of them to qualify for the national championship is, is remarkable, really. Um, so very proud of, of the 16s and 17s. And our guys who have been playing with us here on City 2 are going back uh, with the under-17 team. And they get an opportunity to chase a national championship, which is fantastic. Uh, huge credit to the staff um, and players and, and families that, you know, literally had to take that leap of faith uh, to join uh, a brand new MLS Academy and to reach this level of play again it is pretty amazing. So you've, you've loaned back your, your younger guys to the Academy team for this week? Yes. Yes. You know, and, and that's just part of what we want to do is balance uh, moments where they're being tested, you know, like here at City 2, 
this is a huge jump for, for academy players to be playing with professionals and in professional games. And what you do need to do is you need to have them go back down and play at their age group oftentimes and, and feel, okay, I have that confidence. I can do anything, you know, um, you know, I can be a world beater at this age. It doesn't exactly happen like that, but that process for every individual um, along their own developmental path is really important. Have they done that at, at all earlier on? Have they gone down and played during this? Yeah, we, yeah, we sent them to two different events um, and a couple individual games. And it just is a little bit, you know, on how guys have, have uh, been, whether they're training or playing with us, but we have done that several times already. All right. All right. Thanks, John. No problem. Thanks, Tom. Hey, Coach, how you doing? Good, Tom. Uh, I've been away for a while, so I asked uh, Bill McDermott to give me a question to ask you. Oh, and no, he, not Bill. Well, I've, I wanted to torture you. I'm sorry. All right. Um, You're doing a good job. Youth, <laughs> given the youth and the relative inexperience of togetherness of the team, how pleased are you with their development? And how do you see them further progressing? Um, look, I would tell you that I'm uh, by nature a very optimistic person. Uh, so when I answer a question like this, I, I probably come off as, as almost too optimistic. Um, and I try to you know balance that by a little bit of reality in my experiences. But it's hard right now because I feel so good about what the, the young players on this team, uh, have done in a short amount of time, both individually and as a group. And really, the, my only answer is just being as honest as I can be that really happy for, for, you know, a number of these guys who you can see them growing right in front of us. Um, and in, in big games, if we go back a couple of weeks to playing Colorado, playing at altitude, playing an MLS proper first team, and to see that they're, you know, not only uh, improving, but are able to handle that level of competition in the, that kind of environment. Um, piggyback that with traveling to Chicago, you know, three days later and, and playing a really probably our most uh, consistent performance from start to finish. Uh, I think, you know, I, I just got to say that I'm really impressed with, with those guys as a whole. And um, I think that's something that our club can be very proud of. Like our academy uh, teams, you know, we've done a good job trying to make sure that player development in this first year is paramount. And then you see the players themselves kind of embrace that. And, and that's been wonderful to be a part of. You know, increasingly, when I hear people talk about you, your team, I hear them talk about the, the identity of the team. And I know that's something you've talked about a lot, but just give me a couple of words on that. Yeah, we're very intentional about our style and about our standards and about the kind of environment and culture that we want to establish here at City. And so we've, we've from day one until, you know, we just got off the training field right now, um, we're we're stubborn that way. And that leads um, with a lot of other, you know, little ingredients um, to a group of people, both staff and players uh, have an identity and having a, a clear understanding of the structure and the way we want to play. Um, and as important is that you need people that are of, you know, I always use the term high character individuals. And, you know, for whatever reason, whether we just got lucky as can be, or we did a fantastic job of selecting those individuals, we have a great group of people that work here, um, both as players and staff, and that has really helped us build that identity quite quickly. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Next, we're going to have uh, Jim Leaker. Jim, are you, do you have a question, Jim? Go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, Coach, uh, just real quick, I want to congratulate you on coming from behind. Um, I guess that was, uh, it was quite a bit of a surprise that they came back and got two real quick goals. And uh, I guess that's the, uh, the pressure of the, of the team wanting to make sure that they perform at the highest level. Uh, looking at coming into the next game, you're playing a bottom dweller, but uh, 
I don't think you're going to be taking anybody lightly in this in this league because after viewing not only Premier League games, USL games, you know, next pro teams uh, on any given day, you know, that team can rise to the occasion and, and beat a better team. So I'm sure that all the players are as focused as they have been. So I just want to wish you good luck. Okay. Jim, you can welcome to come into our pre-training meetings because I've been preaching that all week long. Um, and to your point, yeah, this league is, there's a lot of parity in the MLS in general, there's so much parity. Um, but in our league where you, you never know what, what players are going to be arriving uh, on the field against you, like the, the Colorado team, you know, we didn't know that we thought maybe they'd send down a couple first team guys and lo and behold, they sent down, you know, 20 of them. So uh, you never know what you're going to get. And that means that we have to keep the focus on ourselves. It's actually been helpful because, you know, it's not me uh, trying to, to bring that out of our players. You know, they've lived it now. They understand that every single week is, is a different uh, challenge and, uh, more to that point, we've seen teams come here and play definitely a different style than what we scouted. And that's a credit to those teams coming here and, and trying to make adjustments. It's made us uh, be a team that is trying to prepare to the best of our ability and then being able to problem solve within games uh, and still being uh, successful. So, um, yeah, we, I've been preaching that all week, Jim, and, and uh, appreciate you saying that. Um, hopefully our team is taking that to heart and we'll uh, go put on a really good performance on Saturday. Yeah, thanks a lot and, and good, luck. good luck. I'll be seeing you. All right. Okay. Uh, Justin, you got anything for us, Justin? Yeah, hey, Coach. How are you today? Good. How are you? Good. I appreciate it. So uh, now that we've – just one for me. Now that we've passed the midway point of the season and, and you guys obviously – or where you are in the standings in a developmental league, how much do you guys address, not address, how aware, not aware are you of, you know, being right in the thick of a playoff race right now when obviously the, the number one goal is development, but you guys find yourself in a spot where you're fighting for first place every single week? Uh, we We believe very strongly that – part of development is learning how to win, learning how to be successful, learning how to, you know, uh, when, you, when you face an opponent that at, at that initial, you know, confrontation, you feel like, oh no, they're, they're better than we are. How do you literally, you know, what do you do to make sure that you are come out on the, the better end of it? And so uh, we do, we, we look at, you know, every stat you could possibly imagine right now. We look at the table, we look at our, our competition because it is part of it and, and nothing drives development more than, than a culture of accountability where you, know, you get your chance to test yourself against excellent competition. So, um, you know, absolutely. And now we're in a good spot and we've gone through some, some rough patches and had some really high quality opponents. So yeah. Um, we look at winning as, as integral to the development that we want all of our players and our, our team and club to, to be a part of. Guy, you have any question for us, Guy? Hey, Coach, how are you doing? First of all, Tom Timmerman, happy birthday, my friend. Um, I, I This was a good game to watch for me. Uh, I saw a couple of technical things, and I hope I can ask questions that may seem dumb to you, but hopefully they're not too dumb. There's no dumb questions. I'm glad you not, said that. Not in, a, not in a public press conference. Maybe yeah. afterwards we'll, we'll have a different idea. But go ahead. So on the, on the first half, I saw that you operated very much in the uh, far side of the field, away, away from the coaches' benches. Um, and I kind of thought that that would shift in the second half, but you didn't. You stayed in the far side. However, your two goals basically came from the near side. Well, the, the second goal came from the near side. Do players shift – the, the side that they're playing on when they shift sides? Uh, if you'll know, in that game specifically, we started with, uh, unusually, we started with Celio um, on our right. Sorry, we started with Celio on his normal spot on the left and Ezra in an unusual position playing on the right. And that, that it, it didn't turn out to be a great balance for us. So after the, the water hydration break, 
we switched that back and had a little more of, of the play um, with Ezra being a more natural position. Uh, going into the second half, we kept it that way. And that's where I think we found a little more, more balance. But sometimes it's about your opponent. And, and in that game, especially early in the second half, um, we felt it was a really good matchup for Ezra versus the outside back from Kansas City. So we did tend to go down that left-hand side more. Um, but to your point, we found joy from the right because that's where we found the first goal from. Yeah, that the, when, when yeah, I, again, like I said, I, I expected it. You shift near side, it stayed far side, and that corner was was very well done in the fact that they didn't give up. You know, the first shot didn't uh, didn't get through, the second attempt didn't get through, and it was the third attempt. Now, on the game of the week, they said that it was an own goal, yet they've left the goal as Max uh, and I'm, I'm Schaefer's right, Schneider. Schneider, I'm sorry. Uh, did, was it Schneider's goal or did that switch? Uh, I'm going to give you the official statement that Max scored a brace uh, <laughs> in that game. But um, when I looked at it back, I asked him, I said, hey, was that an own goal or was that you? And uh, again, the official answer is that Max scored the first one. But um, there might be you know, some, some jokes being made around Max uh, having given credit for two goals in that game around our locker room. Uh, no, I, I, it was, it was just some confusion. And I wanted to clear it up. The other thing was in the first half, uh, Ian McGrain made a phenomenal save that didn't count as a save where he stopped the ball on the goal line, but it seemed kind of funky getting in there. What did you see on that play? Yeah, really, I think that was some miscommunication between Josh Yarrow and Ian in that moment. And credit to Ian to make the save at the end. Um, but that, that was an issue for us uh, on three different occasions in that game. Uh, really good coachable moment. Um, hoping that we can learn from that. Uh, we try to preach how important communication is, whether it's with your actions or with your, your words or with sounds. And, and that was a perfect example of that. Yeah, Casey seemed to, you seem to dominate the game except on a counterattack. Casey's counter seemed to throw you off a little bit. And they did they have at least one starter or, or first line, first team guy on that, on that team? I think they did, didn't they, Colby Jones? Uh, th they had a couple first team players, not starters, uh, but like the, the center back that, that played was a, is a regular first teamer. Um, I don't know if Jones is a regular first teamer. I actually don't think he is. Uh, but, you know, Benny Fellhaber did a good job setting up his, his team. Uh, again, it's an, it's an example of uh, a team that played differently than what we previously seen them in our scouting reports because they did sit a little deeper. They looked to counter. They were obviously very successful uh, at doing that, got the lead early, um, which meant that we were going to have to adjust and, and uh try to come back into that game. Fortunately, we did. Uh, last question. At the midway point, you're sitting, you know, you're sitting very well. Um, are you, ex are, where are you at in your expectations? Are you exceeding them? Are you at them? Are you below them? Um, I, I think we're, we're probably exceeding them, to be fair. Uh, not that I didn't think this group of players could, uh, you know, come together this quickly or that there was the quality. Um, but the reality is that, you know, we didn't get together until February. You know, this is a brand new team. Uh, it's a brand new club. We're implementing a very difficult and challenging uh, style of play. Our principles of play are very demanding. Uh, again, I think that the credit should be given to, you know, the, the staff here and the players because they bought into all the challenges that we presented. Um, and over the course of a season, usually you, you see some, some dips in form. You see some you know, uh, times when you just don't execute the way you wanted to. To our credit, you know, we've answered most of those this year and, and I'm really pleased for, for the players and, and staff for that. Um, and I asked this question uh, last week, what was some of the negative takeaways that you had from this game? Uh, uh, that you had from this game sorry yeah look we pride ourselves on being a team that is excellent in the counter press uh and if you look at the first goal that we gave up um that's not a great moment for us you know uh we didn't counter press at all uh we didn't step our line up appropriately 
Uh, so we gave them the opportunity to have a counterattack against us. And that's just an example, you know, when you, and we started the game great, we had chance after chance, but if you don't put a chance away, you're going to leave yourself vulnerable. And I think that's something that we have to correct going forward. That wasn't on Ian, right? No, that wasn't on Ian. That, that was on, you know, um, we had the ball. We did a good job to win it. We, we lost it. Um, and kind of a needless turnover. Didn't have a good reaction. That's what I'm speaking of specifically. Yeah, okay. Uh, that's what I figured. And, and I just wanted to clarify it for my own self. Thanks, Coach. It's a pleasure to talk to you each week. All right. Like your backdrop there. Yeah, see, that's what I wanted to show you last week. <laughs> now I got to get you guys to send me some swag so I can hang swag up like I do for my blues show. Cash, send this man some swag. What do you? I'll get cash on it. He's slacking, but that's not, <laughs> not uh, that's not normal. So perfect. All right, thanks everyone. Uh, hopefully, see you guys at the game. Have a great day.